We are going to be underwater, they say, some sooner than others, tides edge pushing and pulling shorelines into new memory. Skies raging with spirals of pressure falling down unevenly on us all. We are going to be underwater. But what if we're already submerged? What if the waters are already above our heads? A godfish in a bowl surrounded tight at the edges by concrete. There used to be a creek here. I don't know when a creek becomes a river or who gets to decide, but not too long ago the waters used to flow free right here. This was dense rainforest draped with mosses, ferns, shrubs, and berries. Douglas fir, western hemlock, red cedar towering, 1,000 years old. Bears and cougars, elks and deers, in grassy pastures, water and life swelling. This was one of the many creeks that lined the contours of the land and poured into the ocean through rich tidal flats. Water sliding, meeting trout, salmon, seals, oysters, orcas, clams, mussels. The mouth of this creek is now a Vancouver Police Department parking lot. 150 years. That's all it took. Two lifetimes and eight generations for all this life to disappear. The cop cars sleep on this flattened mouth on an extended tongue of cement where wheels and puddles churn. By the north side of the tall wired fences is lapping waters. False Creek, they named it. Untrue in the eyes of who? Now with tourists and their boardwalks, a public piano, Black wings flying home, a rumbling bag filled with cans, grand tour bikers, the swift cut of cars overhead. A mouth that was polluted by sawmills and industry, now hidden under high rises and the fake estate of luxury backlit with blue mountains. Maybe it is a kind of false creek now. Yet the barnacles still grow and the waters that used to flow are actually still here, still moving in the skies and underground. Underground with all the layers of piping, wires, gas, waste sewage systems, and tunnels of slicing sky trains. Some waters can still be soaked in soil or run back to the sea. Through all this infrastructure, through all the waters of forgetfulness that we swim in every day. Following these maps of disappeared creeks, I superimpose the blue noodle-like lines onto the grids of these roads. What does it taste like to realize I am submerged in invisibilized histories? Can I hear the bones of salmon in the concrete? Can we hear the whispers of ecosystems and communities destroyed through the numb of our minds? What does it look like when we walk every day in remembering that the Squamish, the Tsleil-Waututh, the Musqueam have lived here for over 10,000 years? The absurdity of choice, the serenity of ignorance, washing us isolated from how we got here and what was here before us. 10,000 years to the conceited 150 years so-called Canada professes. As I walk, I romanticize a time where a more than human world thrives, where human relationships to land are not restricted to ownership and property, where the blood and waters roam free. I yearn for the possibility that remembering can move us visitors, settlers to change, non-linear realizations and embodiments, both indispensable and insufficient.